A new bill quietly introduced by Congress last week is causing quite a stir among civil liberties groups. The brainchild of Senators John McCain and Joe Lieberman, uh, the bill would give the U.S. government the power to indefinitely detain terror suspects without charge or trial and to interrogate them for their quote unquote intelligence value. And it doesn't make a distinction between U.S. citizens and non citizens. So, does this sound kind of scary to you? Well, joining us now to talk about that is uh, RT's Lucy Kavanoff. Uh, Lucy, hello. So, some concerns. I mean, this is kind of a no duh question, I guess, but there are some concerns. And, and, and what are the concerns here? Yeah, well, I mean, people see this as another, yet another example of overreaction by the government in the name of national security. I mean, the frightening thing about this legislation is that it effectively gives the U.S. military the right to detain American citizens in the name of national national security with you know, absolutely no recourse to correct the situation if someone was, for example, detained in error. Um, you know, the, the bill is worded so broadly that it basically could, you know, throw you or I or anyone into jail for being perceived as the war on terror. And it doesn't really set any limits in terms of who makes uh, the decision about that perception. Um, and so, you know, if say we speak out really strongly against the government and it's somehow perceived as being a threat to the United States, you know, we can see ourselves locked up, um, held by the military, interrogated, held indefinitely, and all without a basic right to, you know, an attorney or a public trial and et cetera. It also raised the, begs the question of what happens when you detain someone in error, and also what happens, you know, what mechanisms are in place to prevent this from being politically uh, used in, in a politicized sort of way? I mean, could we see this legislation used to stifle dissent? I mean, you know, Tea Partiers often say fairly critical things of the U.S. government. You know, in its extreme, could we see this legislation used as something to stifle that kind of dissent? What about 9-11 truthers? What about anti-war protesters? And so. You know, the question is limits and oversight, and this legislation unfortunately doesn't set any limits, and it doesn't really, uh, you know, allow any process for, for these kinds of decisions to be overseen in a system of checks and balances. What about people who just simply come on and say, God, I hate this country? I mean, and, and, and even they maybe uh, could be, because of the broad language, a uh, broad uh, scope of the language which you, which you had brought up earlier, they could even potentially be, I guess, put on this watch list by the government. Well, I mean, that's the threat, and that's, you know, that's always the problem that you have when lawmakers legislate out of panic. I mean, you know, we've seen the reaction to the Christmas Day bomber and the, uh, you know, the guy that drove the airplane into the IRS building. We had the Pentagon shooter, and I think, you know, Congress is a very, very reactive body. And a lot of times when something happens that scares American, uh, Americans, a lawmaker says, okay, hey, you know, this is a frightening situation. Uh, I'm up for re-election. I want to look like I'm being really tough on terrorism and like I'm standing up to the terrorists. And so there's this rush to sort of, you know, quickly legislate without thinking through a piece of legislation. And a lot of times we end up subverting uh, values that we take for granted in this country, like democracy and freedom in the name of national security. And I think, you know, Americans definitely want the government to be proactive in terms of, you know, addressing the terror threat, but I don't remember going to the polls and voting to, you know, take away my constitutional rights, do you? We have just about a minute left, but you brought the examples of the, I call them the Underoo bomber, uh, and also Joe Stack. Um, but because of in events like those, incidents like those, don't, isn't there a kind of a need for a piece of legislation like this? Well, again, um, you know, Legislation like this is done out of fear and out of panic, and it's not thought through. The consequences of this, I mean, you know, when you look at the domestic terror threat, a lot of folks, and I'm not justifying this, I mean, uh, any sort of violence is completely inexcusable, but a lot of people are, you know, trending towards violent reactions to what they perceive as uh, a loss of their liberties uh, to the federal government. And something like this is not going to win you any friends by people who already feel like they're sacrificing their rights and liberties in the name of terror, you know. Uh, and the ironic thing is you'd think that this would be maybe a partisan issue where Democrats or Republicans would be different on this. And unfortunately, with things like this, both parties seem to uh, work in lock and step. I mean, we saw the, the passage of the Patriot Act with virtually no debate last week. And, you know, I don't know if this thing is going to pass, but again, there's just very little difference between the two parties on an issue like this. RT's Lizzie Kavanaugh, uh, we will see if this thing passes. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.